When working with power sources like lab bench power supplies, batteries or even solar panels, it is sometimes mandatory to test how much current and power they can output over time. This way you can determine their output capabilities or their true capacity or even track their output power in order to find their maximum power point. Now in a previous video I already showed you how to create a simple constant current load which like the name implies draws a constant current from our power source even when the power source voltage varies. But let's face it, that circuit was not very intuitive to use and could not dissipate much heat, which means it is not suited to test big current draws. So in this video let's step it up a notch and create a very intuitive to use adjustable constant loads which not only offers a constant current and constant power modes, but can also dissipate a lot more heat due to its heatsink and thus can be used for much higher current and power levels. So let's not waste any more time and let's find out how I made it. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB in order to help electronic enthusiasts to build their projects at a lower cost. JLC PCB provides a special offer. Only $2 for 10 PCBs per order with quick build time and reliable quality. There are two main parts for this project. One of them is the power electronics part basically how we measure the current and voltage of our power source and how we dissipate a precise and constant amount of its power in heat. And the other part is the interface, which deals with how the system will input and output the data the power electronics require and produce. So let's start off with the power electronics part, whose main component will be a simple MOSFET. This one is an IRFZ44N, who according to its datasheet can handle up to 55 volts and 49 amps. But keep in mind that a 49 amp current draw can only be reached if the heat dissipation of the MOSFET's heatsink allows it by keeping it cool, which will most likely not be possible with my passive cooling solution. But something like 3 amps at 6 volts is easily possible. By looking further through the datasheets, we can also find the most important graph of the MOSFETs, its typical output characteristics graph. Usually you want to utilize a MOSFET in its ohmic or linear region on the left side, so that you get a minimal voltage drop across its drain to source path and thus have minimal power losses. But that is not what we want. We want to get lots of power losses across the MOSFETs which means we have to use it in its saturation region on the right side. There we got high drain to source voltage drops and thus big power losses. As an example I mounted the MOSFET to my big heatsink, connected its drain to the plus terminal of my power source, its source to the minus terminal and its gates to another voltage source which I slowly cranked up. As you can see at a voltage level of around 3.4 volts, the MOSFET starts working in its saturation region and thus can be used kind of like a variable power resistor. Now of course we cannot use the graph to determine the gate voltage for each current slash power draw. Instead we have to measure the current and power values and then either increase or decrease the gate voltage to keep the measured values at a constant level. For the current measuring I will be using an ACS712 IC, which is a whole effect based linear current sensor. I went with the 20A version, which features a sensitivity of 100mV per amp. That means that once we power the IC and connect a power source to its terminals, we can measure a voltage on its output terminal of around 2.502 volts at 0 amps, 2.602 volts at 1 amp, 2.702 volts at 2 amps and so on and on. Later I will be sampling this voltage with the ADC of the Arduino 
and thus get the current information we require for the current and power modes. And speaking of power modes, for that we also need to monitor the voltage of the power source. That is why I utilized a voltage divider consisting of a 10 kilo ohm and 2 kilo ohm resistor, which will convert the maximum power source voltage of 30 volts down to 5 volts. Once again, this voltage will then be sampled by the ADC of the Arduino. And just like that, we got all the measurement values we require. To control the MOSFET gate though, we cannot simply use a PWM pin of the Arduino Nano, since that would be a signal with only 5 volts and ground logic levels. Instead, we can hook up the signal to a TC4420 MOSFET driver, to whose output we can connect a low pass filter, whose job is to turn the square wave signal into an analog voltage, whose level is determined by the duty cycle of the PWM signal. With that voltage we can easily control the saturation region of the MOSFETs, which means we are done with the power electronics part. Next is the interface part, for which I utilized an I2C capable 16x2 LCD and a rotary encoder, which connect to pin A4 and A5 of the Arduino and pin 2, 3 and 4. Now I have used this interface component combination in a lot of previous projects. So feel free to watch them if you want more detailed information on how to interact with them. But what is more important for the beginning is what kind of menu I want to create for the LCD. So I came up with a total of 8 screens. The first one basically greets the user and the second one lets you choose between power and current modes. After choosing either mode, the rest of the screens between the two modes is very similar. In the first one, you can either select to change the power slash current, start the test or go back. When choosing to adjust the power slash current, you can then obviously adjust those values. And if you choose start, you can see the set value and the currently measured value. Of course, there's also a stop button there. All those 8 screens basically make up the whole system. And let me tell you that after using this piece of equipment for quite a while, I think this menu creation was the right choice. But nevertheless, let's move on to creating the hardware for the project. For which I skipped the breadboard prototype and immediately soldered all the required components to a piece of perfboard according to my finalized schematic. And for connecting the LCD and rotary encoder, I utilized female headers and male to female header wires. Once the hardware prototype was complete, I started the programming for the Arduino. Here is a simple overview of how I did it. I utilized interrupts to detect the turning of the rotary encoder and whether its push button was pushed. And through the help of a screen variable and of course a few other state variables as well, I told the microcontroller what to do at which menu screen when either a turn is detected or the button is pushed. To actually implement the power electronics functionality, I utilized the 16-bit timer 1 of the Edmega 328P in order to create an 11-bit PWM signal. Its duty cycle is represented by the OCR1A value and a 0% duty cycle for the value 0 and 100% duty cycle for the value 2047. When the power or current mode is then activated, this value increases or decreases depending on the measured values. But there is a lot more going on in this code than just that. So feel free to download it through the link in the video description, so that you can go through it line by line. And after uploading the code to the Arduino, my constant load prototype was complete. All that was left to do was mounting the components inside a suitable enclosure and adding binding terminals for the power source inputs and a DC jack to the 5 volts power inputs. To finish off this project, I also conducted a couple of tests, which all turned out acceptable. The only mentionable thing to note, which many viewers will probably complain about, 
is that a super precise down to milliamp or milliwatt loads cannot be achieved with the system. Since the measured values all depends on a 10 bit ADC, whose resolution, like the bit number implies, is not that high. So if you want to improve this build, then feel free to add a better ADC and maybe even a better DAC for the MOSFET's gate voltage. This way you will get more precise and stable values. But overall I'm still satisfied with the end results and I will hopefully continue improving the software side so that I can get rid of those oscillating measured values. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.